and welcome to this video on the true size of countries. We all know that it's pretty hard to make a sphere flat. There have been lots of attempts at making 2D representations of our 3D globe throughout history, and most of them have resulted in huge discrepancies with angles and shapes. The projection that most of us are very familiar with is this one, the Mercator projection. Developed by the Flemish cartographer Gerardus Mercator in 1569, the original goal of the map was to represent the Earth in a way that best showed it for navigation, due to its ability to represent straight lines of constant course. That means preserving the angle between the latitude and the longitude of the Earth. This is the one that we see in classrooms today. However, while it's good for navigating in straight lines, the Mercator projection is surprisingly warped. Let's start with Russia the world's largest nation, covering two continents at over 17 million square kilometers. But is it really as massive as we think? If we move it closer to the equator, we can see that it pretty quickly gets smaller and even appears more concave than we're used to. If we put Russia over Australia, we can see that it's only probably about twice the size. We can see something similar if we move Australia up to Russia, very stretchy. Greenland is one of the most notorious winners in the Mercator Stakes. It looks huge! It must be the size of Africa! But what if I told you that Africa is 14 times bigger than Greenland? Don't believe me? Check this out. When we put Greenland on top of Africa, it's only about the size of Algeria, one of Africa's 54 countries. The reason Greenland looks so big on our maps is because the Mercator projection exaggerates the size of land area the further away you move from the equator. Greenland is really pretty small. Alaska, the biggest US state, towering above the rest in the Arctic Circle. It looks as if it could stretch all the way from Florida to California. But wait. Like Greenland, Alaska is very far away from the equator, making its landmass appear distorted and exaggerated. If we place it on top of the contiguous USA, we can see that while it's still big, it's really only about a third of the size it appears when it's up on its icy throne in the north. Let's have a look at Brazil. Brazil is big, very big, but on the equator it looks small compared to its global counterparts. If we put it on top of Canada, it appears to grow in a big way. Stretching from Canada's southern border, all the way up to nearly the North Pole, Brazil is unrecognisable outside of its usual South American location. So let's switch it around. Putting Canada, with its Arctic islands stretching out to sea, on top of Brazil, which lies on the equator, makes it look considerably smaller in size. The Mercator strikes again, and our perception of land size is proven wrong once more. Norway is known for being very, very long. It looks as if it could be about the same length as Chile, right? No. Norway only covers about half of Chile, even when including the island of Svalbard. And if we try and lay Chile over Norway, well... Now the important part of the video. Let's see how many countries we can fit into Africa. This video was made possible with the use of thetruesize.com. Check it out and see if you can find any surprises. Thanks for watching and I'll see you in the next video.